Philippians 1, 6, this is a great verse. Well, if they received Jesus, were they really saved? You know what? That's something for God to tell. Amen. We're fruit inspectors. You know, some people you know are saved. Other people you're like, hmm, I don't know if they're saved. Here's the thing. The minute they said that prayer, being confident <coughs> of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on unto completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. People say, well, I can't believe you, know, you think you can you know, win somebody to Christ at a pizza shop. Yeah. You want to know what happened with the guy that got healed? I said to him, He was like, not here. Didn't want his friends to see him. We gave him some CDs. We went back by. Matter of fact, Terry's place of business visually can see his place of business. Mm -hmm. You went by and met him. Mm -hmm. And he was saved at that point, wasn't he? Yeah. And he was sharing with other people about his healing. He went home, he couldn't believe. He woke up the next day, he's still healed. He's like, uh huh. <laughs> I'll give it another day. <laughs> I'm going to listen to those CDs that guy gave me. He was giving out the CDs. And so we just came back, gave more CDs, tried to get him plugged into a church. He's got a Bible. He's mm -hmm. See, it can happen at any moment. We thought we were going because we had a blowout on the tires. Mm -hmm. And we needed new tires. But God wanted to give somebody a, a life raft. And he got it that night. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 33. Verse 6, if you've got your Bibles, go to this, because this is the verse that God spoke to me in 1990. As I'm thumbing through the Bible, I'm reading, and it just came off the page, and it penetrated me, and it shook me. That's when you know you got a calling, or God's speaking to you through that verse. Ezekiel 33, 6, but if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people, and the sword comes and takes the life of one of them, that man will be taken away because of his sin, but I will hold the watchman accountable for his blood. If the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn them, that man's going to die in his own blood, in his own sin. And the person that didn't blow the trumpet and warn them, I will... Hold him accountable. I don't want God on that day to say, you didn't share the gospel with the person mm -hmm. next to you. You didn't share the gospel. You didn't pray with that person. You didn't offer that day. And I'm holding you accountable for their blood. They died and went to hell. You... Well, but what if they, what, what if they kick me out of the social club? I won't be, I won't be invited. I won't get promoted if I... Away from me, doer of iniquity. I never knew you. If you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. You deny me, I'll de John 4.35. And we're closing. John 4.35. Well, people don't really, they're not interested in you. They're, they're trust me. Look at the stupid stuff they're doing. Look at the right. things that we did. We were looking for something. We finally ran into the real thing we haven't switched. You know, Coke's got a thing. The real thing. We got the real thing. We're bigger than Coca-Cola. Yes. <laughs> and the retirement plan, it's out of this world. Yeah. <laughs> Streets of gold. John 4.35. Do you not say, Jesus speaking, Four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Mm -hmm. Scripture goes on to say, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send laborers mm -hmm. into the harvest field. Mm -hmm. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. You know what their job is to do? to equip the saints for the work of ministry. I'm charged 
from an evangelistic perspective and a teacher to equip you to go do the work of ministry. Yes. Not to sit on a pew. That's great. Believer's anointing. Great place to start. Let's move up. Mm -hmm. Let's get out of Christianity 101. Mm -hmm. Let's move from pew sitters. Let's get off our blessed assurance and go do something. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said this. Come follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. You want to know how you can be a fisher of men? Simply pray and say, God, put divine appointments in my path today. And make me aware of when these occur so I don't miss them. You know what? Invariably, we're going to miss some. You want to know what's going to happen? Because we're going to be talking, soulish, this and that, and talking about, you know, football or whatever, or business, or, you know, Aunt Sally, and, you know, why her socks don't match. You know, we just get in these conversations. Tell the truth, shame the devil. You've done it too. Okay, it's a big deal. Okay, I'm the only one that's done it. I admit it. So, so when we realize we've missed it, just say under our breath, oh, Redeem the days for the redeem the time for the days evil, and God will recreate the situation supernaturally for you to share again. I don't know why, but this verse has nothing to do that I can tell with this message. But I'm I'm supposed to share it. It just keeps coming up. It's the key to how this thing's done for healing. Acts 9.36 has nothing to do that I can see, but I'm going to obey God. Amen. And if I'm wrong, I'd rather miss it trying to obey Him than miss it by not obeying Him. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and salvation for those who believe. The first the Jew, then the Greek. Here's the thing. You want to know what will get people saved? The gospel. Gospel means good news, yeah. not bad news, right. not doom and gloom. <clears throat> Don't tell, oh, the sky's falling, the world's going to end, you know, Egypt's falling apart. All those things are true, but the good news is yeah. Jesus is alive. He came to give you life and to give it more abundantly. He came to heal you, to set you free, to deliver you. Yeah. A lot of Christians, man, I just, they don't have the joy of the Lord. They don't have the boldness. You think they've been baptized in the lemon juice. You know, you're just like, what happened to that guy? I'm always in a bad mood. Oh my God, no. There is an intensity, but there's a joy that we have. The boldness of Christ in you, the hope of glory, will convert souls. You may not like the person who's bold. They might be, be like Peter. They might be a real mess up. But you know what? God's using them. You know why? Because they're doing something. Yeah. Ignorance on fire is better than knowledge on ice. <laughs> There's some ignorant people within the body of Christ that are winning souls. We got all this knowledge. We're sitting on ice, doing nothing. We're going to get to heaven. Well, God, I want to show you the perfect doctrine I have. He's not interested in your doctrine. He's interested in the doctrine of relationship with him. You can have perfect doctrine and not have relationship. Pharisees had some pretty good doctrine. Crucify him. Hmm. They fulfilled scripture, didn't they? Good doctrine. I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't want to hear, well done, crispy critter. <laughs> Acts chapter 9, verse 36. Now there was at Joppa, and I have no idea what this is tying into. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. Actually, that means gazelle. I don't know why. This woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass, verse 37, in those days that she was sick and died. Sick and died. Whom, when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper chamber. Verse 38, for as much as Lydia, Lydia was nigh to Joppa, city of Joppa was close to Lydda, and the disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Verse 39, then Peter arose and went with them, 
When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, dead girl there, and all the widows stood by him weeping. <coughs> Picture the scene. Your friend is dead. Rigor mortis is set in. She was a good person. Everybody loved her. And all the widows stood by him weeping and showing the coats and the garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Peter put them all forth and kicked them out politely. I need some time alone with her. Verse 40. But Peter put them all out and kneeled down, number one, and prayed, number two, and turning to the body, said, you want miracles? Pray before you speak. Pray to him. Get the word of the Lord and then speak it into the earth with a proclamation. And miracles will happen. Much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power. See, Peter showed up and he's like, man, I'm not prayed up on this one. Some, I, I miss God. I was too busy doing my taxes. You know, whatever you're doing. It happens, right? Mm -hmm. So when you get there, people are, can I have some time alone? See, Peter had the doctrine of relationship. And what he did was he realized, <laughs> God, I missed it. I haven't been seeking you. You didn't reveal this to me. It's a messed up deal. God, what do you want me to do? And then God gets razor from the dead. And said, Tabitha, arise. He didn't even use the name of Jesus. You know why? Because it was Jesus speaking out of him at that moment. When you get a command from God, it will come out of your spirit, and it will release the word of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit will confirm it. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows that he kicked out, because you kind of, kind of get away from unbelief sometimes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> He presented her alive, and it was known throughout all Joppa, and many believe in the Lord. You want evangelism? Start raising the dead. Yeah. That's right. I'm going to tell you what. Yeah. <laughs> you do that, it's going to get some people's attention. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe me, we got it on video in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because people are getting healed, not one at a time of an earache, but deaf ears are popping open 20 at a time in a service. Amen. Let us stand. Has this been helpful tonight? Yeah. Yeah. We're about to come off the bleachers spiritually and get onto the astroturf. We're ready to run the ball. First and ten, do it again. <laughs> now you may not always get a touchdown, but you might get that extra yard that puts your other teammate in a position to score for the kingdom. One plants, another waters, but only God can bring the light and add the increase. You want to know what he adds the increase to? That which we plant and that which we water. No planty, no watery, no light. I'm going to pray tonight for those that want God to give a fresh, holy boldness. 1 John 4.17 says this. As he is, so are we in this world. As he is, is he all-powerful? Yes. All authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go into all the world and preach the gospel. And these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. If somebody slips them a mickey in their drink or poisons them, they'll drink it and suffer no harm. And they shall lay hands on the sick, those that believe. And the sick will recover. Behold, I am with you until the end. Of the age, he says. 
as he is, so are you as his representatives in this world. Let us pray. Lord, I pray that you would instill and fill and impart a Holy Ghost boldness into the people present here, that you would empower your body, the body of Christ, the body of Yeshua, Hamashiach, to come alive, to rise, and to go represent Jesus, to represent him, to represent the Christ with signs and wonders following, whether it's prophetic evangelism, power evangelism, lifestyle, hospitality evangelism. Let the seeds go forth. Let your people, the body, I call forth the bones to come back together and the sinews to come alive on this body, which is yours, Lord, to come alive that we might be fully functioning, no longer tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the cunning craftiness of men, but we might grow from the measure to the stature, to the fullness of Christ, and come unto the unity of the faith, that others might know that you are the Christ, and their names might be lift, written in the Lamb's book of life. And those in agreement, and will be receiving this right now, say, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.